Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome everyone to JustWorks' seventh installment in the Ask an Expert web series. Today's presentation is subtitled Employee Mental Health in COVID-19. Before we get started, a little housekeeping, sweeping, mopping, dusting. Um, your audio is muted by default, um, so we can get through all of the great content we have um, up front with our special guest today. Um, we received some questions upon registration, which will be addressed at the end on um, the second half of today's presentation, and we'll also be taking live questions. So for those of you new to the Ask an Expert format, um, the first 15 minutes or so are going to be a presentation by our esteemed guests, and then we'll be fielding some questions, um, some of which we'll, we'll receive live. So um, use that Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and that's how we'll receive your questions. Lastly, this webinar will be recorded and will be sent out by an email along with plenty of resources that we reference in today's presentation and with details on how to register for next week's webinar. Um, with respect to questions and resources, we did get a lot of pre-submitted questions about modifying the physical workplace and general return to work from like a logistical and, and mechanistic side. Um, that is not the topic of today's webinar. We're focusing on employee mental health, but JustWorks has just published a landing page, an encyclopedia index of um, return to work resources, uh, which you can access um, via our resource center at justworks.com. And um, that links out, that, that has a, a, a million resources in itself and then links out to all sorts of considerations you should be making with respect to turn, return to work, like policies, physical workplace modification, and the like. Um, you can also look at um, some of our past webinars also on our website that detail um, some of those return to work considerations. Great. With that, just our quick standard disclaimer, this material has been prepared for informational purposes and is not intended to provide legal or tax advice. We're focusing on employee mental health today again, so not one of our more compliance heavy webinars, but an equally crucial topic in employee engagement, relations, and um, productivity and wellness. So. Finally, I get to introduce our guest, Dr. Amy Service, who is Director of Clinical Content at Talkspace. Amy, thank you so much for joining me here today. You are very welcome. I'm really happy to be here and really talk about this topic that I think is going to be really important and relevant for everyone. You know, uh, when we prepared for this, I got to ask you about this a little bit, but before we jump in, can you tell me a little bit about your role at Talkspace and, um, and just what, what brought you to this point in your career? Yeah, well, that second part is a bit of a long... <laughs> okay, well, you and I all get coffee later for that one. Yeah, so, so really my job at Talkspace is uh, to provide and lead the clinical voice across the teams. I think everybody knows that we have a community of providers who are amazing therapists that are providing the services within our network and having um, that one-on-one -on -one contact with our clients my job is really to lead clinical initiatives across the company to make sure that the information that we're putting out into the public is accurate and uh, up to date and relevant um, across the board. Great, thank you so much. And I hope today's webinar falls squarely in line with that mission. So thanks for that background. All right, we're gonna jump back in here um, just to quickly cover the agenda, three pronged, um, topic today is going to be communication in advance, creating comfortable comfort for employees upon their arrival, and then fostering an ongoing space for mental health maintenance in the return to the um, physical office environment. Finally, closing with our robust Q&A. So Amy, great. When we talk about communication in advance, um, communication in advance of what? And uh, what should we be putting out there to our employees so that they feel prepared? Yeah, so when we're talking about communication in advance, what we're doing is directly addressing their mental health and well being because we know that when information is put out, when people know what to expect, their anticipatory anxiety decreases, their worries decrease, it really puts them at ease because for most um, work spaces, there is going to be considerations that have to be put in place. And I think that there's two major points here. Um, one, it is you're sending the message that their employees are really being taken into consideration. They're being thought of. And two, that the um, organization itself is really on top of it. They're in control. I think with so much information out there, 
that can be inconsistent with one another. What we want to do is create an environment for employees where they feel like they're in a safe space. So one way is to communicate that, um, which is what we're talking about here. So what has that physical environment, um, how has that physical environment been changed? Has their workspace been altered? What were they come back to? I mean, that sort of home away from home where their, their space, where they work and they, um, spend the majority of their day, is that going to be altered in any way? How are um, the use of common spaces? I think certainly for us at Talkspace and for companies across um, the state uh, and across the country, there are norms that we adhere to and those common spaces of collaboration. That's really going to be um, something that we want to be able to report out to say, okay, you're going to come to work. This is what your space is going to look like. This is how you can also make sure that you can um, go get water, go get coffee. What are those things look like? Are there, are there differences in that? And then, um, you know, and how are you going to move about that space? And then any administrative changes, you're going to want to make sure that they know what to expect when they walk in that door. So there's a visual aspect. And um, I think, you know, what we've outlined here in these bullet points um, that concludes with send photos and diagrams really helps people have not just a verbal understanding, but what is my space actually going to look like? How is it altered? And um, what are any changes that I might expect when I walk in that door. You know, now that you put that out there, Amy, it seems perfectly logical. And to me, I, it really hit home how essential this is. But it's one of those things you, you do have to say it because it would be so easy to make the assumption or to forget um, that you tell employees to come back into the office and their default mindset is that I'm coming back to what I was previously familiar with, to what I knew. And they might be worried about Oh my gosh, what if what about when I use the printer now? Um, has has my everyone's touching it? How how um, has my employer looked out for me and created a physically safe space? So I appreciate you sharing this with us and want to remind our attendees one more time that when it comes to how to get to the point where you've structured this diagram, where you've made these decisions, please um, check out justworks.com and our landing page for resources on on the, on the what and the how. Um, but thanks so much for that. That great advice, Amy. Yeah, I think in it just, you know, to just say one more thing about that that's coming to mind, certainly for employees, employers that I have worked with too, as well as individual clients, I think there's the range you can expect. There are going to be people who are really worried and want to have those cues and think, yes, what about that printer? What about that water uh, cooler? What about that coffee machine? Um, and then there's going to be employees that are going to say, oh, oh, right. I didn't even think of that. So you're doing a service across the board for everybody by communicating those visuals out in advance. Great. Thank you so, so much. And just sort of painting a picture, um, maybe even um, structuring it in the, um, from the employee experience perspective, like as they walk through the office, how is reception going to look? Then once you pass that, how is your workstation going to look? What are bathrooms going to, what are the new bathroom realities going to be? So great. I mean, um, you said something earlier I, I want to highlight too about just reducing the anticipatory anxiety the mental load for employees, right? The less they have to navigate, the more comfortable they're going to be and the more um, they'll be able to focus on compliance with the new procedures. 100%. Great, thank you. Um, feedback, okay, so I mean, feedback is, um, the, the realm of feedback is expanding. I feel like we're not just talking about feedback to your man managing up or communi expectation communication. <laughs> what, what does um, employee feedback mean in the new office environment? Yeah, so getting some, every culture is different. Every office culture is different. It is comprised of different individuals and employees. So what do, what, what's going on for them? They've been home for a long time. They're getting ready to come back to work. So you want to, again, it does two things. It sort of sends the message that, hey, we're thinking about you and we want you to be a participant in your comfort level as you come back to work. Of course, we've got it covered. Of course, we're gonna to adhere to these guidelines to keep you safe. And also, there are also things that we can do to make sure that we're allaying some of your concerns. And so sending out feedback, um, the CDC has put out a toolkit that um, HR um, office managers can utilize and socialize. And that is 
there can, there's checklists for themselves to make sure you're adhering to standards, but then there's also a uh, checklist and feedback that you can send out to employees. And you can really, um, SurveyMonkey has them, Question Pro has them. So if you're digging into some of those templates, you can take the information that's on them and then gear them to what you would really like to know from your employer, so, or employees rather. So what are their concerns? What are they worried about? Uh, what is their confidence level as they're coming back in? You know, what do they feel like they need to have in order to have space in their environment? What are the questions and their concerns? And if you are, as you're gearing up to get ready, you're having equal participant in uh, your employees, you're going to be able to feel like, okay, I am ready for them. I am ready to welcome them because I've listened to some of their concerns and can address those in advance. Would you recommend that employers open the door to ad hoc feedback, or is it preferable to create, to carve out space, whether it's via surveys or uh, town halls to um, predetermined times and, and manners to, to gather that feedback? Yeah, I think really for employers' own mental well-being, I think that having it come in in an organized fashion helps reduce their stress, gives them some parameters and some boundaries around, um, you know, when that information is coming in and how it's coming in. So, um, and, you know, I think also even town halls certainly can be effective and are a great way to show faith that we're opening up a conversation. But um, being really mindful of the fact that those can um, breed a lot of fear and worry, and, and that worry can be contagious. So if there are specific avenues and channels that that feedback can come in on a certain timeline, that tends to work best. Wow, great. Thank you. I hadn't considered the employer <laughs> mental health perspective, but that's crucial so that they can continue leading their business effectively. Thank you for that. Um, before we move on to our next topic, just want to remind all participants that you can start asking questions of Dr. Service in the Q&A functionality that you'll find on your screen, and we'll get to those in the second half of today's uh, presentation. So let's talk about creating that comfort up front. All right. I'm here. You sent me a really great email about what can I, I can expect um, in the new physical working environment. I've familiarized your, myself with the new policies like um, PPE, reasonable accommodation, type uh, maybe expanded sick leave. How do I, um, how, how can you, my, my boss, my employer, make me feel comfortable now that I'm here? Those are all really good things to actually make sure note in your email that communication going out. Yes, I just want to sort of highlight that and underscore that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they have all this information, they're walking in the door, and you don't want them to just take your word for it, right? We work best when we have visual cues. Um, so having that visual cue of this space has recently been clean, that's common practice now, and that's really helpful to say, oh, okay, great, as opposed to, I wonder if they remember to clean that, um, whether that's on restrooms, whether that's in your personal workspace station, that also goes to um, common areas like I was talking about previously, whether that's food or snack or water areas, that um, there are some visual indicators of how they can sort of rest assured. But also in that, um, the second piece to that is that you're also creating an environment where everybody is responsible for it. So if I'm personally knowing that I'm taking this wipe and wiping down the water cooler after I've used it, I wanna know that there's instructions that everybody must do that too. So there's visual cues for their own um, comfort level and also for uh, expectations of everybody else around them. Wow, totally. I can see so like in HR, for example, we tend to love color coding, like different files. Um, sort of similarly, I can see how the new physical office environment would be littered with like cute and encouraging uh, posters, <laughs> right? In the bathrooms, um, this bathroom gets cleaned at 9, 12, and 3. You know, remember to, it's crucial to wash your hands. Um, you know, only two people in this conference room at one time, right? So it'll be, <laughs> it'll be a lot of visual and um, visual reminders. Yeah, exactly. And to your point about, you know, only two people allowed in this conference room, I think that that also helps, you know, you mentioned that that email that is so great, that comprehensive email before they walk in that door, but then also reminders for them so that that is also reducing their stress and anxiety as they are not held accountable for all of those details all of the time themselves. 
it, it lets them have those cues so that they get reminders, they can focus on their work and they know that, oh right, this one, this conference room is two, or this is the path that I have to walk now. So that that allows them to feel like, oh, they, they, you know, they're, that the entire responsibility isn't on their shoulders. That's so great, reducing the mental load so I can focus on productivity and compliance with the new policies, that's great. And as you have here, we've written, you know, there's in those frequency of check-ins and space for feedback, which um, are also important. We want to create that space for, hey, by the way, how's it going? Do, are these understandable? Do they feel like they make sense? How are you doing? Let me make sure that, that the feedback didn't end prior to you coming in the door. What can we reasonably expect of managers, people managers during this time? reasonably expect from them to know protocol and to be able to disseminate that in an organized fashion and mm -hmm. also be able to um, provide information as they're also taking care of themselves. But if you are an employee, your manager should be able to say, um, this is, these are the, in case you forgot, this is it. And then that second piece that we're talking about right now, which is just being sensitive to the fact that you know, you want to be able to provide an open, comfortable space for conversation because, of course, we don't expect everybody to feel comfort. That's our goal, but we know that they're not going to be, and there's going to be a range. So managers should be keyed in and sensitive to um, hearing that and not necessarily having to do anything about it at the moment because there's bigger things in play, but just being a space to hear some of that as it comes in. Totally. And larger organizations, individual contributors might not feel comfortable approaching HR if there's one HR rep for 100 people, for example. So managers have to be the ambassadors to the organization in, in these circumstances, I guess. 100%. Great. So, oh my gosh, I love this. Um, so, um, <laughs> when employees come back... <laughs> I didn't see this before. Um, so, uh, I didn't see this before our session today. That's amazing. Um, so when employees come back, it's going to be, things are going to be different. Um, we talked about before how it's not business as usual. It's not coming back to exactly the way things were, um, but rather it's establishing a new normal. So um, what can we do <laughs> to, um, for employees to um, <laughs> feel comfortable and, uh, um, in the, in the in the changed environment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, which is really, I, I love this because it's like, you know, there's, you know, the old adage of there's an elephant in the room of we need to acknowledge that. This is not business as usual. You're not expected to just sort of get on with it and move forward. There's going to be a range. There is an adjustment. And so you have that key goal of ramping up to adjusting back in. Everything is sort of working in our new normal, but we're not quite there yet. I mean, the worst thing that we can do is to say, yep, here it is. And Let's go. These are the new procedures. Let's move on. There has to be a period of adjustment um, and know that these are some crazy times. This is really difficult on a number of different levels. We understand that you don't come into work as your work self. You bring your whole self into work. And so this is a challenge and we want to make sure and acknowledge that. Right. So not taking time to say, yeah, that happened. We all went through that collective trauma together and we're trying to achieve a sense of a new normalcy, but not to in any way sweep it under the rug. That's right. And I think that just to add, one of the things that I think is important to say is that one of the differences of something like this happening is that, you know, managers may not always be adept at, um, you know, keying into mental wellness issues, but they certainly have been to the exact same thing. So it really does help managers understand that this is something that is um, challenging. Yeah, and I want to mention that in our follow-up email, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be a great follow-up email. Um, this sounds like a lot to ask of managers and employers have so much to consider. Um, again, we will be sending links to the return to work landing page and also survey templates that you can send out in, to employees to assess their ongoing mental health as well as their comfort level um, with various changes that you've made. So um, we think that you'll benefit a lot from what we have to send out. Um, this next topic is where like HR policy and mental health are 
two specializations, Amy, really overlap is how can we afford flexibility to employees who need it for their own productivity and, and well-being? Yeah, and that is going to, you know, change from one company to the next. Those policies and procedures are variant, but I think that being able to know that or being hopefully able to provide as much leeway of flexibility, whether that's put in place in protocol or whether that's just on an individual basis and understanding that the we are returning to work, but children are not all returning to school. Um, other spouses or partners or cohabitants in the same household, their, their schedule looks differently. And so everybody has their own return to work journey and it is different for everybody. And so again, taking that whole person into consideration that their level of sub anxieties are going to be different. Some people are going to be so thankful to get out of their house and into work in a sense of quote unquote normalcy for them. That rhythm and that routine feels really good. For other people, they're going to be extremely stressed because there's some things going on at home that are, you know, those, those loose ends have not been tied up. And so everyone's got different levels of anxiety and family obligations. And so just respecting that everybody's um, journey here is very unique. Absolutely. I, thank you, Amy. I really want to move on to um, the sort of third stage in the life cycle that we've used to frame today's discussion. And it's, okay, maybe I've been back for a month, two months, three months. It's not like we just become okay and we're good now. How can we foster, continue to foster a space for mental health maintenance um, as we grow and change and adjust to the new normal? Yeah, and when you're starting out strong, sort of reviewing all of those things that we just talked about previously, you have a plan in place, you have a structure in place, but that structure is really fluid. We don't really know what things are going to continue to look like. So how do we assure that these habits will be continuous? And that's really on managers, that's really on management. And one of the ways to do that is to continue to solicit ongoing feedback. For um, employee uh, employers themselves, we don't want to believe that, you know, they're not looking for perfection either. They're looking for really close. They're looking for, you know, the, the goal is to aim high, but of course they're not going to be perfect. Part of that ongoing adjustment for them as well to say, okay, well, let's have some feedback from everybody. How's it going? What do they need more of? Was this what you expected? How can we continue to meet your needs? Because again, it isn't business as usual and you want to continue to relay that um, we understand that things aren't going back to normal. So we're going to continue that feedback. And there's a three-pronged approach to doing that. That can be open discussions, whether that's in an all hands for the whole company, mm -hmm. so that we, it's sort of a collective understanding and that there's one way of communicating that information and how that in feedback is solicited. There can be one-on-one -on -one meetings with managers specifically set in and um, anonymous type forms, which you know, I think different companies have different feelings about that, um, different cultures, but it's one way if you feel like you might not be getting any feedback or people might not necessarily, you're getting the message that they're not feeling so safe, making it anonymous allows you to get real accurate information. If I can comment on the HR perspective for surveys for a moment, um, when I first got into HR, surveys were sort of regarded as passe or outdated. Um, I have to say, I think they have staying power. And as an HR consultant, as a very culturally progressive organization, I can say that surveys have a lot of power because of the data component. And one recommendation I might make is that consider administering the same survey over a period of time on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and then you can look and see exactly how you're progressing, um, where you're improving, maybe where areas that need improvement, rather than trying to just glue together a whole bunch of anecdotal feedback. So um, some food for thought um, with that regard with um, surveys and feedback collection. Of course, a, a, a smorgasbord of feedback mechanisms are probably going to serve you well as, as well. Love that. So we've talked a lot about all of the, what managers are up to, um, the new challenges and, and the expansion of the manager, the people manager role. Um, so let's give them some tips <laughs> right here, right now. Um, how can they become, if not mental health 
experts may be mental health aware or um, at least be able to participate in what I've referred to as mental health first aid, uh, first responder, if you will. Yes. Yes, and I think that um, they're, they're, they're pretty basic signs. You can understand if somebody is not adjusting well because their behavior is markedly different than it had been before. Their productivity is down. They're coming in late often. They're leaving early. Um, they're sick. They're out. Some of the same signs that we see when someone is going through something at any point of time that we're noticing in a, a, a change in behavior from an employee, they're going to be... Um, the same right now. Um, a lot of resistance or anger. If somebody is simply not adhering to some of the things that um, you've put in place and sort of constantly violating that and there's some resistance to that, that's a sign that they're not really adjusting as well as they could be. And on the other spectrum, sort of ignoring everything and just constantly saying, everything is perfect, everything's fine, everything you've done is really wonderful. And then there's no sort of buy-in and, and ability to communicate. That might be another indicator that, um, you know, they might want to be adjusting well, but they might not be. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, what is what are self-checks? Um, you know, mindfulness is a great, buzzword and really receiving a lot of attention. How do we do it? Yeah, I think also for ourselves, if you are, especially if you're in a management position, making sure that you're revisiting um, your own well-being, making sure that you have boundaries in place, understanding when you are depleted at the end of the day, when you feel like you are trying to solve everybody else's problem all of a sudden and make everybody feel comfortable and you're feeling burned out, those are signs that um, you need to adjust some of your own well-being and really just making sure that your work hours are consistent. You are having some balance in your own personal life and you are investing in time away from work and the same with the same vigor that you're investing in the workspace. Absolutely. We have to advocate for ourselves. You have to, um, I've heard the expression, put on your own oxygen mask before you uh, help your neighbor, right? Yes. Great. Amy, thank you so much for your wisdom and guidance. I'm so excited to move on to our Q&A. So we did have some pre-submitted questions that I wanted to get to first because they were so good. So let's pull those up. I've added them um, to the screen here. Uh, the first one is what are some topics or questions that are good to have ready for discussions uh, with employees? We just touched on some of them, um, you know, sort of signs of employee mental health struggles, but um, what can you add to that? Yeah, I think also just quickly saying um, that you are emphasizing people's mental health and well-being, acknowledging um, that this is abnormal, some of the things that we talked about, just making sure that you're acknowledging and really prepared to say, you know, we get it, we're here. Um, often, uh, employer employees want to know, you know, how those decisions are getting made. What, are the, what information are they using to put these protocols in place? How do they know it's safe? Um, is there a protocol in place for getting that extra support? If I'm not feeling like I'm adjusting well, where do I go? And making sure that even if they might have known previously and they have dis you've disseminated that information, just putting it out there and being really verbal about what they can do for themselves should they need that extra support. Nice. Thank you. Um, one, I have something to add to that from the HR perspective. I don't know what the mental health theory is behind this, but I've found that as an HR professional, if you ask someone, are you doing okay? That might not be the best way to phrase it because it be makes it into a binary dynamic. They either say, yes, I'm fine, good, even if they're struggling inside, or they'll say no, and then it's like, I'm not doing okay. It, it might be blown out of proportion. So I think open-ended questions in that respect are more important. Don't, don't set someone up to just give an affirmative and move on. Love that. Thanks. Question two. I want my agency to promote more staff appreci appreciation because this impacts um, healthy attitude and engagement and morale in the workplace. What kind of interventions can be done to do this uh, without funding? Yeah, you can do a lot without funding. Tell people you appreciate them. Don't be shy about it. Acknowledge, just tell them it's okay. They can't hear it enough. Um, back that up with visually incorporating their feedback. When people see the effect 
that their feedback has in the workplace. We need more Lysol wipes. All of a sudden it's stocked with Lysol wipes. I guess that's sort of um, that will take funding, but you're actually, you know, responding to their feedback that really um, connotes appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, offering items, this is specific to what's happening now for sure. Offer things that are, offer extra masks, offer extra safety precautions, those things, those little details really help people feel appreciated. Um, offering in-house fun subgroups, book groups, extras, things that they can get involved in, team building within teams, time set aside for them to interact in a way or to either discuss what's going on or to interact in a way that is not just work driven. Um, offer guidelines for quick mental health, make sure that you're constantly talking about that. Um, and I think you and I talked about this Moses that I thought was really great that that sort of tip box and making sure that they know that there's always that ongoing feedback that's appreciated. Totally. And I have to say for me personally, some like just games that I've played with my team, like uh, code names, or we did a virtual escape the room have made the biggest difference for me. I mean, happy hours have sort of lost their sizzle, if we're being honest. So I think group activities, ones we can manage on Zoom um, are pretty cool and make a big impact. Yes. Right. Our last pre-submitted question before we go live we are live before we take questions live. How can mental health be emphasized to employees who are not in the mental health field? Yeah, and I was, I was thinking about this question and I really think that when we talk about mental health, we can even switch it to mental wellness. Everybody can talk about mental health. You don't have to be an expert. You want to feel like mental well-being. Do you feel okay? Is your, are you incredibly anxious? I think making sure that um, you know that mental health isn't just um, severe distress or eliminating um, dysfunctional symptoms, but really it's about our well-being and our quality of life at work and our happiness. And we can all continue to have those open conversations. Great. Thank you so much. I know we, we shouldn't expect uh, managers or, or anyone to become a mental health expert overnight, but there's definitely a little education we can do to um, sort of help employees on their journey, I think. Yes, and there's tons of information out there. I think one of the things that's been, you know, a silver lining in all of this is mental health is now on everybody's mind. And so giving resources and talking about it, it's easy to access and disseminate as well. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take some live q and I'm so excited. So Zanita Daver, Daver is asking, can you share where to find the survey questions again? I'll take this one, Amy. Um, yes, yeah, so it'll be sent in our follow-up email. All registrants and attendees to today's webinar will receive um, a great email with all sorts of resources, a recording of today's webinar, and it will include the survey questions that you can send out to employees uh, that I wrote, actually. You'll like it. Um, great, so um, let's see. L.R. Brown is asking, while we all have been exposed to the general pandemic, how would you advise managers to recognize that the level of trauma will actually differ depending on employees' racial background, economic circumstances, and other social differences? Well, I, first of all, that is really important because I think just saying that, what you just said, that will absolutely be different. I think one of the things that we have worked on at Talkspace is sort of educating and talking about that, that trauma, especially racial trauma um, that you have experienced in the past is going to be heightened now. Sort of cultural education and awareness is really important and probably um, needs to be emphasized because that is something that needs to be taken into, consider, into consideration and put in place as people are coming in. And I think that just acknowledging that across the board for your company, for your employees, being sensitive to that and um, opening up dialogue to that so that they know that if you are um, uh, coming in that everybody is not only diverse in their individual experience, but, but ethnic and racial backgrounds have different experiences coming back in after something like this. Definitely, I really um, thank you attendee for raising that question. I think um, even that becoming part of the discourse in every channel, in every medium that we have in the business world and beyond, I think helps drive equity and, and drive that question forward. So thank you for asking, truly. Um, just one last question um, from Zanita, another procedural question. She said, um, 
Amy mentioned SurveyMonkey and something else. What the second survey software was, it was a Question Pro. Great. So with that, I want to be respectful of everyone's time and uh, let's wrap up. So Amy, again, Clinical Director of Content at um, Talkspace, thank you so much for joining me and for the benefit of your time and your expertise today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for having me and um, good luck as everybody returns back to the workspace. Thank you, and on behalf of our attendees, thank you. Um, I'm Moses Ballion, Certified HR Consultant at JustWorks. Please join us for our next Ask an Expert session, which you can find on our website. Thanks everyone so much for joining. <laughs>